Hi, I'm Sarah, a developer on the Node.js Tools team, and I'm here to tell you about some of the awesome support we have for Node.js in Visual Studio and in Azure. Node has undergone a massive surge in popularity across all sorts of applications, ranging from media streaming services to finance to Internet of Things devices to who knows what next. I mean, just check out how many packages are available via NPM, Node's Package Manager. 160,000 and counting. Lots of great tools and frameworks, but 160,000 packages? It can certainly be overwhelming. So with Node.js tools for Visual Studio, we aim to bring all of these pieces together for you into a more streamlined experience, while still providing you with the flexibility to take advantage of all sorts of third-party tools. So whether you're writing, debugging, unit testing, profiling, or even deploying your application, we've got you covered. And best of all, Node Tools is completely free, open source on GitHub, and available for most recent versions of Visual Studio. So with that, let's run through the first steps of setting up a Node.js project. First, you'll want to download Visual Studio if you haven't already. And of course, Node Tools is compatible with the free community edition of Visual Studio. During the Visual Studio install, make sure to select the Web Tools component, because Node Tools takes a dependency on it. Next, you'll want to install the Node Tools extension. When the installer completes, you'll be prompted to click through to other recommended installs, such as Node.js itself. Now that everything is installed, let's fire up Visual Studio and create a new project. The first thing you'll notice is that we have these new Node.js project templates under the JavaScript and TypeScript nodes. I'll be using JavaScript for this demo, but all of our features are available for TypeScript as well. And as you can see, we have templates for the most popular Node frameworks for Azure, and a special template if you happen to be coming in with your own existing project from outside of Visual Studio. For this demo, we'll be using the Azure Express Starter template. And in order to work any, around any max, potential max path issues, we recommend using a short path like c colon slash source. Now that our project is loaded in Visual Studio, you can see that it's gone ahead and installed all of the NPM dependencies that are required for the project. And you can see them in the NPM node over here. So we can simply press F5 to start debugging and see that our app is indeed working. And we'll click around a little bit and we'll find that, you know, the website is working, but the contact page could use a little bit of something extra. So let's go ahead and add a form field that people can actually enter in a message for us. Uh, and uh, we'll store it somewhere so that we can view it later. In order to do that, we're going to have to switch into the uh, contact Jade file. And Jade is a templating engine available for Node. And there are all sorts of other uh, templating engines. It's basically just a matter of preference. Uh, if you are someone who's really into ASP.NET and Razor, uh, then Vash will probably be the uh, most familiar templating engine uh, for you. So all I did here was just post a bunch of uh, forms code, pretty standard, a couple of input boxes, et cetera. And now uh, you'll notice the server is still running. I closed the browser, but we can go and hope, head and open that. Um, and so now if we go to the contact page, we should see this form available. But if we enter in some data over here, it doesn't actually seem like it's working because it can't post to this contact uh, new route. So let's go ahead and add this route um, so that we can handle the, and handle the post request. So we're going to stop debugging. And the routes are created in app.js, which is the entry point for the application. And we're going to add a post handler for contact new and routes new contact. Uh, we're just going to define that as a new uh, function. And we're going to F12 into contact uh, so we can actually get to the location where we want to add our uh, new contact uh, post request handler. And now in this handler, we actually want to be able to um, 
handle it, to save this message and this email address that are coming through. So we're going to go ahead and say that var message is uh, request um, parameter, and we're going to get the message parameter, which is coming from the form field. And we're going to also get the email address, which is coming from the request uh, email address parameter. Um, and then beyond that, we want to go and actually save this data somewhere. And in order to do that, we're going to download um, the Azure Storage uh, NPM package. Uh, this is our NPM UI, and it makes it really easy to actually search between the packages in the NPM registry, kind of a NuGet-like experience. And of course, you're always free to dive into the command line and what have you. And now, you'll see that we can actually start uh, using the uh, Azure Storage package you know, we, we're getting completions on uh, require um, so that we see the packages that are available for us to use there. And um, we have a static analysis engine that's actually running. And we can go ahead and it's already analyzed the Azure package and all of its dependencies. Um, and it's providing us with code completions right now. So I'm going to say that the assign this to the table service. and. Uh, I'm not going to bother with the rest of the code over here. I already have some of it prepared. And this is just some code to actually uh, go ahead and create the entity and stuff like that. If you want to learn more about it, um, then you can actually right click on the Azure Storage and PM node and select this new open documentation uh, command. And that makes it really easy to deal with new packages that you're using and understand what they're doing. So now, when we actually run the code, we can see, we can go to the contacts page, we'll enter in something and submit it, and it's not working. So let's go back to the code and we'll set a breakpoint over in the new contact method and try again. We'll reload the page and we're going to step through and it looks like our message uh, is uh, actually, uh, is is, uh, oh, I didn't enter a message, so we don't have a message, and our email is set correctly. And we can step over this, and we can step over the create table service, and that seems to be where our error is arising. So it looks like we forgot to actually add the Azure storage uh, key over there, so we're going to switch back into Solution Explorer um, and find the, this is the storage account that I plan to use. We're going to go into the properties there, grab the storage account key, um, so it's really nice. You don't have to switch into the Azure portal or anything like that to make this happen. And now we are going to uh, reload the page. So continue, uh, and we'll F5 all the way through, and success. And so now, I think I already had uh, an entry in there before, but we should now receive one that had an empty message, but a non-empty email address. Um, and around the time that, yep, and this is exactly it. So great, everything is working, and of course what demo wouldn't be complete without, w would be complete without a final deploy to uh, another server. So publishing is super, super easy within Visual Studio. You simply right click on your project, select publish, and go ahead, and we've already configured it with our web publish settings, and we can go and wait for the publish to complete. And yay, our app is loading. And lo and behold, you now have a live running site. Alternatively, and this will work well if you're on Mac or on Linux, you can take advantage of Git deploy to update your site. Oh, and speaking of Mac and Linux, if those happen to be your deployment targets, be sure to check out our cross-platform remote debugging to help drag down those pesky works on my machine sort of issues. And that's it. We've only just scratched the surface of what's possible in Node.js tools for Visual Studio. So go ahead, download the free tools, check out the documentation, and let us know what you think. And as always, whether you have comments, compliments, or complaints, we'd love to hear your feedback especially if it comes in the form of a pull request.